Okay, so um, if you can turn to Romans chapter 8, okay, Romans chapter 8, and uh, verses 13, 14, and um, yeah, 13 to 16. Okay, let's read. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. I'll read verse 17 also. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Okay, so um, very interesting few verses here. It says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live according to the spirit, you will live. Right? If by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. Right? So the Holy Spirit helps us and we bring an end. Like putting a death is this final thing. We bring an end, a stop to the deeds of the body. Everything that is of the flesh, we will live. And look at verse 14. As many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Right? Uh, and it says, you did not receive a spirit of bondage, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So we see a whole lot of things mentioned there about the work of the Holy Spirit. That he is giving evidence to our hearts that we are sons and daughters of God. And he's also leading us uh, in, into our inheritance as sons and daughters of God. And he's also enabling us to put to death, bring to an end the deeds of the body, right? So it helps us in the, help, the work of sanctification and wanting to live, empowering us to live a holy life, life that is pleasing to God, right? So let's pray and ask him and say, God, uh, I just want to open my life for these three things, you know, specifically, right? I, I want to put to death the things of the body and it's by your spirit, so help me, God. Right? And also, Lord, I want to be led by you in all these ways. And uh, and the third thing is that, um, Lord, I, I want you to bear witness with my spirit that I'm indeed a son, a daughter of the Most High God. Right? He's going to bring evidence, more and more evidence, and so we feel reassured that you are indeed a child of God. Right? So let's pray. So um, maybe we'll just spend some time praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. If you want to stand, you can stand. Um, it's, uh, right? Okay. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Just go ahead, just pray out uh, in the spirit. We're praying for the first thing now, just praying, God, you know, you, you enable me to put to death the things of the flesh. Bring to an end the things that do not displease you. Bring to an end those stubborn things, those addictions, those things that seem to hang on to me, Lord. You enable me, empower me, you uh, sensitize me, Lord, make me aware of these things, God, and empower me to put to an end to those things, to put to death those things, right? So let's pray. <laughs> Yes, Lord, we thank you that you called us to live by the Spirit and by your Spirit, God, uh, with the help of your Spirit, oh God, put to death, put an end to these things, God. And continue to pray in tongues. I continue to pray in the Spirit. And so, God, we ask, oh God, that you would do this work, that you would empower us, Lord, that you would sensitize, uh, sensi make us sensitive, God, make us aware, oh God, of those things that we need to bring an end in our lives, Father God, things that are not pleasing, things that are not helpful, um, things that are, Lord, in, Lord, really holding us back from stepping into the destiny that you have for us, God. Yes, Lord, enable us, give us the strength, Lord. 
Ur, Mosme, Kendere, Hirere, Mizina. The second thing, you know, we, we saw that um, the Spirit of God leads us, you know, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God and daughters of God and children of God. And uh, we have the privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit. So go ahead and just thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you that I'm your child. Lord, I thank you that I have the privilege of being led by you, God. So lead me, God. You know, one thing about leading is that it always means that somebody has to follow. So when the Holy Spirit leads, it means that we have to follow. So we just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm willing to follow you. I'm willing to follow you, for you have good things in store for me, God. Yes, Lord, you are good, oh God. You are the good shepherd, so I'm willing to follow you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So give your yes to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm willing to follow you. I'm willing to follow you because you never leave me. You will never forsake me. I'm willing to follow you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you're hearing, Lord, each one of our prayers, Father God, even as we pray, even as we ask, oh God. We believe that it is in line with your word and in line with your will. So, God, we ask, God, that you would lead us. Uh, many of us maybe uh, want to be led into the destiny that we have, you know, the purposes that God has for us. Uh, we want to be led maybe out of uh, certain painful things and into health and wholeness, uh, physically, emotionally. And maybe we want to be led from a place of weakness and limitation to a place of strength. So just pray and say, God, you know, with that intensity and say, God, you lead me, Lord. You lead me, oh God. I'm willing, oh God, to follow you. You lead me. Holy Spirit, lead me. I want to be led by you, Father God. Oh God, I want to be here, able to hear your voice, Father God. I want to be able to, I want to, be able to know you, Master, uh, intimately, God. Yes, God. Yes, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Reveal your will. Reveal your plan. Reveal your purposes to us. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. Oh, Ramosim, take care. take care. And then the last thing we saw was that uh, he bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. He brings evidence to our spirit. He brings that reassurance and proof uh, to our spirit. Sometimes it's it's not even just reasonings, but it's just his presence. Just his presence, that calm reassurance and that sense of peace and strength within. And you know that you know that you know that you are a child of God. So may the Lord bring that sense of reassurance. May the Lord bring that sense of peace, which is so much like a pillar inside of us, so much of a strength inside of us. And, uh, let's just uh, welcome him. So today we're just, we're just going to say, God, you come. We welcome your Holy Spirit. Bring that reassurance. Bring that reassurance. Calm. And uh, we reject all those fears, oh God. We reject all those lies. We reject all those insecurities, oh God. Uh, we reject all those anxieties, oh Father God, about our sonship, about our identity, God. And you bring in, you bring that sense, oh God. We are not orphans. We are not uh, in bondage to fear, but we are slaves of righteousness. Oh God, we, you bring in that reassurance. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you that we have you to lead us in all these areas, God, and much more. And Lord, today, uh, these sessions, we commit into your mighty hands. We pray that you continue to speak to us, continue to teach us, continue to write your word upon our hearts. And uh, Lord, uh, lead us into your truth, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Yes. Okay, so what have we been studying last two classes? Um, we've been looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, right? We looked at several scriptures. So we, let's uh, wrap up today. Uh, let's look at a few more scriptures. We saw in, uh, I'm looking at uh, in the notes, I'm looking at this section where uh, it's mentioned about David, right? David, um, people were connected to David in order to lead the army. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, brought 
the um, the army actually to say yes to David, to say yes to the cause of David, right? So we saw that practical application in today's time. Maybe you have God put God has put a dream in your heart. God has put a vision in your heart, and He wants you to do some things. He wants you to you know minister somewhere, and you're saying you know how can I do this all alone, right? How can I do this? But the Holy Spirit, who knows the hearts of others who have a similar vision, or maybe the Lord wants those people to be connected to your lives you know he'll do that like that so that's the practical application um okay the next thing that we see um, this is the reference i was searching for but it was right there first chronic chronicles 28 and verse 12 okay so uh, let's read first chronicles chapter 28 and uh, verse 12. so it talks about how um uh, you know verse 11 then david gave his son solomon the plans for the vestibule, its houses, its treasuries, its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat. Verse 12, and the plans for all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, of all the chambers all around, of the treasuries of the house of God, and of the treasuries of the for the dedicated things, and so on. So here we see that the Holy Spirit has literally given a blueprint for the temple. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, if you read the, the verses before that, it says, uh, verse 3, uh, God tells David, okay, you will not build, but your son will build. Okay, but the fact is that he had given David the blueprint for building. Right? So can God do that in our day and time? You know, a blueprint for, for a physical structure, a blueprint for, you know, maybe, you know, various things in our lives, right? Uh, a blueprint, yes, God can and God will, right? Holy Spirit can. And uh, we see that he had the plans uh, for all this by the Spirit, which means by the inspiration, by the directing of the Holy Spirit, all these plans he received in his Spirit. Okay? So we see that. Okay. Then uh, in Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 15, Second Chronicles 20, and Second Chronicles 24, so we see that... Um, um, the Spirit of God coming over and the people speaking on behalf of God. Okay, what would we call that? We would call that prophecy, right? Prophesying. So we, we see that. Okay, let's go to Second Chronicles um, and look at uh, Second Chronicles 15. Okay, and um, verses 1 to 10. Okay. Um, maybe just verse 1. Okay, now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and, sent, and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will, be, he will forsake you. And then he goes on to say, uh, verse 7, But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak, and your work shall be rewarded. Verse 8, and when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded, the prophet, he took courage. Okay. He, he was moved to action. Right? He was, there was some boldness which came into his life, and he was moved to act on it. And this is what he did. He removed the abom abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim. And he restored the altar of the Lord and was before the vestibule of the Lord. Okay, So all that started when the Spirit of God came upon Azariah. The okay, Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out and he prophesied. Okay, So... Um, Spirit of God comes upon and he prophesies. He gives an instruction about the heart of God. And the effect is not just that, hey, that's a, that's a good word from the Lord. Okay, It was not just that. But it moved him, the king, to action. So there's something that happened in his spirit that he received boldness and courage. And he did a very bold act. Right? He removed uh, what was uh, abominable to the heart of God in all the land. Okay. So let's look at one more. Um, let's move, move to um, Second Chronicles 20. Okay. Second Chronicles 20 and um, verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of uh, Benaiah, etc., etc. And then he said, listen, 
all of you of Ju all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat thus says the Lord to you do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's okay so what happens in the beginning, if you read the beginning of that chapter, verse 1, it says, as it happened that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them, besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Okay, there was a big battle, and they, they, you know, it, it was a great multitude. It was, uh, Jehoshaphat was outnumbered, and there would be damage, there would be loss of life, loss of property, everything would happen. Right? So, um, so some came and told him, and it says in verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set, uh, set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Okay, so he, he was literally, you know, he was fearful. Okay, he was afraid. Now this is what happens. The, the Spirit of God comes upon Jehaziel and he prophesies. He said, do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed because that was the condition of Jehoshaphat's heart. Right. So the Spirit of God knows what was you know, his condition. He was fearful, and there comes this prophecy. Okay, so verse 18 if you see, Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and uh, inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And uh, and then you know, there's the strategy he has these worshipers before the army, and, and the Lord uh, sets ambush, and then there is uh, defeat happening there. Okay, uh, somebody wants to know, okay, what is the page number? Okay, uh, can you just tell me what is the page number that we're looking at? Sorry? Eight, is it? Okay, it's page number eight. And, um, okay, I hope it's that it, it's the same for the online, uh, your PDF download also. Page number eight is what we're following here. Okay, um, right. Okay, so Azariah, Jehaziel, and then um, if you if you turn to uh, chapter 24, verse 20, chapter 24, verse 20, then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, who stood above the people and said to them, thus says God, why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? And, uh, you know, he, he says, he gives a very hard word, because you have forsaken the Lord, he also has forsaken you so uh, speaking the heart and mind of God and uh, it results in some change in the hearts and lives of people okay so the Spirit of God Holy Spirit coming upon people and is causing the the message from the heart of God to be uh, communicated to the heart of man right you see that every time the Spirit of God comes upon so that's what we see. Okay, then in Nehemiah chapter nine. Okay, what is Nehemiah famous for? For rebuilding the wall. Okay, so Nehemiah chapter nine, and uh, we look at. Um, okay, so it was twenty. Okay, so so Nehemiah actually here is testifying. Is uh, um. You know, he's uh, talking to the people. He's telling them about the whole exodus, and and he, there he's testifying. He's saying, "You also gave your good spirit to instruct them, and did not withhold your manna from their mouth, and gave them water for their thirst." Okay, so he's saying that it is your, it is because of your good spirit. It is because of the Holy Spirit that this happened. That you instructed, and you provided. Uh, and you made sure that they were fed. You made sure that they were, uh, you know, they uh, they did not die of thirst in the wilderness. There was water for them. There was provision for them. Right? Um, so we move. On. Let's move on to the Psalms. Okay, Psalm forty-five. Um, maybe somebody can turn to Psalm fifty-one. Psalm forty-five, verse six. Okay, can somebody read? Okay, Psalm 45 verses 5 and maybe 6 and 7.
yeah so um says the lord your god has set you above has anointed you right says he has anointed you with oil of gladness right this verses uh, 6 and 7 psalm 45 okay so anoint what does anoint mean we're going to look at uh, that a little later anointing and what does anoint mean anyone use that no oh, this very anointed time we had <laughs> or anointed uh, person man of god woman of god what does anoint me to be filled with the holy spirit okay what does filled mean then <laughs> is it just another word for fill right okay okay so, so uh, we will look at the background or you know of anointing and all that but um, it simply means the the presence and power of the holy spirit Right. So the presence and power of God, uh, you know, transferred or upon a person uh, by the work of the Holy Spirit. So he says here that you have anointed me, which means through the work of the Spirit, you have filled me, you have anointed me with the oil of gladness. We'll see, uh, you know, uh, other verses also, uh, uh, which talks about anointing. Okay. Um, okay, Psalm 51. Okay, what does Psalm 51 say? Create in me, 51 and verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Okay, so uh, David prays that prayer and he says, Lord, renew a steadfast spirit. I want to be consistent. I want to be strong. I want to be steadfast, you know, regular in the things of God. You know, I don't want to be up and down. Right? That's what he says, right? Uh, I want to be steadfast consistent in my walk with you um, then in verse 11 he says don't cast me away from your presence and do not take your holy spirit from me so what do we learn from here see that <clears throat> we see that david really knew understood and also valued the presence of the holy spirit in his life right so the holy spirit was a constant companion inspiring him not only to write songs but he had experienced you know uh, uh, the army being brought together under him, he experienced the, uh, you know, the designs for the temple from time to time that God would give him. So he experienced the work of the Spirit, and he says, "God, you know, I've sinned greatly, but you know, don't take your Spirit from me. Like, don't take your Spirit from me." And uh, if uh, because I really value that. Right? So, um, so what we understand is, you know, um, we, <coughs> sorry. Okay, so we also need to, um, you know, value and esteem the work of the Holy Spirit. Right? We, when we learned about the Holy Spirit being a person, um, you know, that He can be grieved, He can be quenched, you know, He has emotions, etc. So we saw that. <clears throat> so the best thing we can do is begin to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and right? commune, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, um, there's this benediction, which um, I think it's at the end of um, um, which epistle is it? Um, let me just pull that out. Um, is it Second Timothy? Um, no, it's um, I think it's Peter. <clears throat> Okay. Um, okay. Um, you know, where I think it's it's one of the epistles of Paul, actually, where Paul says, you know, uh, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, you know that, right? Um, I don't know where that reference is. Is it Colossians? No, it's. Uh, Second Corinthians, okay. The last verse, okay. Last chapter, last verse, right? Okay, can you um, can you just read that out, please? Yeah, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship or communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, so uh, Paul closes that epistle and he's just speaking that over the people, right? 
may this happen it's like a blessing may this happen may this happen may you experience this right so now um, you know in some of our church services worship time uh, uh, or the and at the end of the service this is pronounced right i'm sure you have heard that now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and then it's time to leave after that everybody's like okay service is over let's go <laughs> um so but it's these are very important words where you know we just saying the, the father son and spirit the tr uh, trinity is mentioned and the thing is there's the grace of our lord the love of god the father the fellowship of the holy spirit the communion of the holy spirit be with us all so um the, the king david you know the psalmist he seemed to have understood the fellowship of the holy spirit and then he's saying you know i I cannot function without this, without your Holy Spirit. So do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So the, the question again, I think we answered that. Um, so is this prayer valid for our lives? Can we pray that prayer? Um, what do you think? Let's see if you remember what we addressed last time. Uh, online students, what do you think? This prayer, is it valid for us in this day and time or not? Valid meaning, and I still pray that prayer saying, Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Yeah? How many of you are saying yes? How many of you are saying no? <laughs> to what? Yes or no? Yeah. So you're saying we can pray that prayer. Take not your Holy Spirit. Okay. One, two, three, four. Most of the boys. Okay. And, okay, you're all, you're all saying no. Can't pray that prayer. Okay. Those who are saying yes. Please explain why we should say, is it okay to say yes? Hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, all that you said is true. Like, we grieve, we are unable to hear his voice, we miss out on his leading. All that is true. But can we pray saying, don't take your Holy Spirit from me? So that's the question, right? Um, okay, those who said, no, you can't pray that, why? Uh, but how can you say that with such surety? <laughs> what if he says, okay, huh? Okay, so so we're just having a discussion here, online students. So some of, uh, okay, some of you have also said yes and no. Uh, oh, you've not said yes. Okay, all of you have said no. We, we don't have to pray that prayer, okay? Uh, there's Prabhu who says yes. Um, okay, okay, just uh, just here. Uh, sorry, your name again, Karen. Okay, so Karen, tell us uh, why this prayer is not valid because after Jesus' ascension, he sent the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay, let's just finish this. So he, he comes and uh, this thing. So he says he'll send the Holy Spirit. But what if the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, your life is so sinful and uh, I just can't. I'm holy. I'm the Holy Spirit. Uh, your life is so sinful. I think I'm just going to leave. Is that possible? Okay, so, so Charisma is saying, Charis, no? Charisma, okay. So Charisma is saying, um, well, it's not possible because in John, uh, the Lord Jesus, when he's describing the Holy Spirit, he says that he will be with you forever. Okay. See, um, the verse that we read just now, you know, before we, uh, and we prayed through, right? Romans chapter 8. Okay, let's go to that place again before we look at John. So he says, uh, John chapter, uh, sorry, uh, Romans 8 and verse 13. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. Okay, that if you're going to go after the appetites of the flesh, sinful flesh, you're going to come to an end, which is death. Okay. But 
how will you live? It says, if, if by the Spirit, which means by the empowering, leading, guiding of the Holy Spirit, you put to death, which means my will is involved, I have to take responsibility, I have to act. If you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay, so this is the thing for the for a for a believer. What is a believer doing? He loves the Lord. Sundays, oh hallelujah, praise the Lord. Monday, or maybe Sunday evening. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, the strife and fight and all that. And then, oh man, I, I just want to, you know, relax, watch some you know, Netflix, watch some Amazon and Oh, nothing wrong, but then you're choosing certain stuff, which is, which is the opposite of what you, you know, you know what you discussed in church. <laughs> and then you're saying, okay, so here, where Paul's writing, and he's saying, hey, this is how you will live. Yeah, your body's craving for all that, and you kind, of, kind of seem to be stuck in that. But if by the Holy Spirit, who indwells you, so the Holy Spirit has not checked out. He's not gone on vacation. He's with you, even in all those times. But he's going to be speaking and uh, in a warning. So if by the Spirit, if you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Okay. So many times we think, okay, uh, I'm sinful. Maybe the Holy Spirit has left. But like uh, Vijay, right? Uh, sorry, right? Prince said, yeah, he is grieved. And the more and more we indulge in sin, the less and less we hear his voice, right? He's still speaking, but our heart is hardened. Right? Hebrews 3 talks about that, that don't be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So we are hardened and we are unable to hear. And um, we become you know, uh, insensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That happens, right? So sometimes we think, okay, maybe God is not there. Maybe he's just left. But the fact is that he is there. He is speaking, he is warning, he is guiding to make sure that you put to death the deeds of the body. So you see what an amazing gift the Holy Spirit is. Okay, what an amazing companion the Holy Spirit is. So that's why he said, I will not leave you orphans. Right? The Lord Jesus said, I will not leave you orphans. I will give you another helper, parakletos, paraclete. Right? So he will help in all these areas. So we need to invite, we need to welcome the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so Psalmist, uh, Psalm 51, he says, oh, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. But he was living in a dispensation when the Holy, dispensation when the Holy Spirit would go. And maybe he has seen that. He, maybe he, you know, he, uh, he heard uh, the Holy Spirit has left Saul. Maybe he heard, I'm just imagining, you know, and Samuel comes and anoints him as king. Maybe he thought, hey, People were discussing at home, you know, over dinner. But what about Saul? Did Samuel, you know, anoint Saul also? Oh, didn't you hear that? Holy Spirit has left Saul. And so he knew the, uh, the probably he knew the, uh, the functioning of the Holy Spirit. He, he would leave and he's like scared. Man, I've sinned so badly. God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. So that's what he's praying. That's what he's. So for us today, he's with us forever, but we don't take it lightly. We don't take it lightly. We esteem the work of the Holy Spirit and we, you know, uh, give ourselves over to the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at uh, a few other verses. Okay, let's look at Psalm 89. Okay, Psalm 89 and verse 20. Okay, Psalm 89, verse 20. Um, I have found my servant David with my holy oil. I have anointed him. You know, this was another reference, right? 45, Psalm 45 also we saw about the reference about anointing. Okay, so uh, I found my servant David and I've anointed him with uh, the um, uh, with uh, with my holy oil. I have anointed him. And, and we see that oil is again a reference to the work of the Holy Spirit, like oil of gladness. And oil, anointing oil. Right. Literally, we see that um, you know in the tabernacle they anointed, meaning they smeared uh, the vessels or the you know all the things that were used in the tabernacle. They would 
with the anointing oil. And we see that the anointing oil was a special mixture. You know, we had a special recipe and they, they put all these flavors, I mean, fragrant uh, spices together and they would make the anointing oil. And that special anointing oil was to be used for the special purpose, purpose, meaning it would be used to anoint or make, you know, smear or cover the, uh, these, these things which were used in the tabernacle, right? And it was not used for anything else. Right, it was consecrated to the Lord, which means a, this is marked for the Lord's use. This is marked for worship. This is marked for, you know, for service in the house of God. Okay. So the anointing oil. So the, we see that the oil is a reference to the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we'll see that over and over again. Okay, okay let's move on. Let's go on to this uh, to uh, the book of Isaiah, right? Isaiah um, chapter ten and verse um, twenty-seven. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder, and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Okay, you see that? Right? So there's a yoke. Okay, there's a, there's, there's a yoke which is holding someone, tying down someone. And it says here, um, you know, this is the burden will be taken away, and the yoke will be taken from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Okay, so, um, well, the Lord Jesus talks about the yoke and being yoked together with him. But here it's talking about an oppressive yoke, okay, meaning uh, a, a, a tying down which is, which is not allowing you to do what you're supposed to be doing, which is not liberating, which is impris imprisoning. Okay? So that yoke, which is the work of the enemy, is destroyed because of the anointing oil. So it means the yoke of the enemy, the oppression of the enemy is broken because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So the so we, we, we could we could actually pray, Lord, let let this oppression, let this oppressive thing be broken, let this oppressive chain be broken in this person's life or in my own life, that you're anointing. So what did we say? Anointing is the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we, when we look at the life of Jesus, um, you know, we will see that he was anointed for these things. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good. Acts chapter ten talks about that. So we look at this. So that's why anointing refers to the presence and the power, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so simple way to understand what is anointing: presence and power of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. Right? Okay. Um, let's look at one more verse, um, Isaiah 28, sorry, Isaiah 11, uh, verses 1 and 2. Okay. Isaiah 11, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and his delight is in the fear of the Lord. So we see here, uh, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is also, all these characteristics of the Holy Spirit is mentioned here. What are some of those? Wisdom. Right? Wisdom. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? Anyone? Online folks, uh, please explain yoke. Okay, so um, so I think we we looked at. Um, uh, okay, I don't know if this was, this came in just now or earlier, uh, Krisha. So anyway, um, so yoke is something that um, you know that, that ties down. You know, like uh, if we see, um, it, it's a binding, it's a tying down, which actually restricts our movement. Uh, it's in a in a in a positive way. If you see um, a yoke, actually enables person, uh, like especially if you look at cattle you know, plowing the ground, uh, a yoke uh, 
for the cattle actually enables the cattle to stay together, stick together, to direct the cattle so the work is, task is done, right? So that's looking at it in a, in a beneficial way. But if you, look, if you see is as a negative way, it's like, I want to be set free. I want to be free to do what God wants me to do, but then, or, you know, uh, what I want to do, but I'm unable to, because there is a chain, there is a yoke which is holding me back. Okay, so, and, and the reference that we saw, uh, we saw, um, Isaiah 10 is talking about um, the burden being taken away and the yoke being taken away, which means it's a liberating act, right? Uh, and it says the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. So, so that's the uh, that's a simple explanation of yoke, right? Um, I hope that helps. Okay, so how does the enemy put the yoke on us? Okay. Uh, well, well, different ways. Uh, it could be because of ignorance uh, that we 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 allow the enemy to put a yoke on us. You know, the enemy. Uh, we see the Lord Jesus saying, John chapter ten, he's saying the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? That's the work of the enemy. And uh, God, uh, the, the, he talks about himself as the shepherd. He comes to uh, you know give life and life in its fullness. So the opposite of that is the work of the enemy. So. Well, enemy would try try to steal, kill, and destroy, and it, we can do it in so many different ways. Well, one of the ways is to to lie, bring deception, because he's called the father of lies, um, and so he would lie. And if we accept the lie, then we come under the yoke of the enemy, right? So we come under that lie, and we let's say the enemy says, uh, "Okay, that uh, you will never be successful." just a gentle statement you know that's a lie and maybe that just happened uh, sometimes when we are growing up maybe in school that happened the teacher said you'll never be successful My parents said you'll never be successful friends you know they just made fun and saying hey you'll never be successful right in life and um, so it, it's not the truth because the lord has come to make us you know uh, uh, to give life and life in its fullness so but if we accept that lie then it becomes a yoke that the enemy uses to keep us oppressed. So let's say many years later, you accepted the Lord, you came to the you know, saving knowledge of Christ. But at the back of the mind, there's still this, you know, still this lie. Uh, well, the Holy the Lord Jesus says the truth will set you free. But we have not really, you know, in this particular area, we're just holding on to this lie. And we are really giving that enemy to work on that yoke, you know, to keep us, hold, hold us back every time. There's something, maybe there's God, you know, God wanting us to do something and then holding us back saying, oh no, I will never be successful. Now that's a yoke. So enemy can do it in many ways. Um, he can do it in lies, deception, intimidation. Right? But we give permission sometimes um, out of our maybe ignorance. Right? Okay. Uh, I'll just read a comment from Nina. Okay, so now you're answering what is wisdom? Okay, Christ is the wisdom of God. Yes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, so we're just looking at the word wisdom. You know, what, what is it really? So, yeah, what is wisdom? We all use it, right? It's, what is knowledge? Info, oh, sorry. Information, okay. Sorry, the ability to understand, is it? Okay, the ability to understand information, learning, right? Okay, all that is knowledge. Okay, so then, what is wisdom? Is it? Hmm. Okay, knowing where to apply. So there's a difference, right? We can get a lot of learning. Uh, but if we don't know where to apply it, right, the situation in the context in which to apply it, uh, then it becomes a waste. So that the, the ability to apply, or the uh, you know the skill to apply our learning, our experience, is wisdom, right? Um, and not just the ability to apply, but also maybe to bring in solution, to bring in counsel, right? So here. We see that the Holy Spirit, um, okay, I'm just reading a few comments here. Wisdom is, 
comes from experience, um, perhaps, uh, or insight. Yeah, it is all that. Yeah, not, uh, you know, wisdom can uh, can come from experience. Um, but we just need to be careful because uh, the, the Bible also talks about um, you know worldly wisdom uh, and the wisdom that comes from God, right? Um, and like uh, Nina mentioned here, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Obviously, it's talking about um, you know godly wisdom. So, yeah. Okay, so he's called the spirit of wisdom, meaning he brings wisdom to us. He is wise. Like when we say Holy Spirit, He is holy. That is His characteristic. So the Spirit of God is wise. He is wisdom. He brings wisdom. Right? So that is one of the characteristics, one of the facets of the Holy Spirit. What else? Is Spirit of wisdom and understanding. He's the Spirit of counsel and might, you know, strength. He's the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Okay. It says his delight is, is in the fear of the Lord. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit and he has all these characteristics. He brings in all these characteristics. So he's able to bring it into our lives. The wisdom of God, the knowledge, the understanding, the fear of the Lord. And he's able to bring it, bring these things into our lives. Okay, so uh, let's look at one more. Um, okay, let's look at Isaiah 28. Okay. Okay. Can we turn to Isaiah 28? And uh, okay, verses 5 and 6. And also, um, if we read some, uh, read from 10 onwards, um, you know, this is something that, um, I mean, if, if you read it, you, you see that, okay, uh, you can see, is there a reference to the Holy Spirit here? Okay, so what do you think? Isaiah 28. Um, okay, in that day, the Lord of hosts will be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. And he's called the spirit of justice. For a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for strength to those who turn back uh, the gate. Okay, uh, verse, verse 10 onwards, for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Okay, so, so the thing is, it, it again talks about a ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we, we, we kind of get a better understanding when we read 1 Corinthians 14. Right, uh, 1 Corinthians um, 14 and verse 21, where Paul um, refers to this very scripture, right? refers to Isaiah 28, and this is what he writes, 20 and 21. Okay, he says, "Brethren, do not be children in understanding; however, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. In the law it is written." With men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people, and yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. And he goes on to say, Therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. So uh, we'll get into a detail of this when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit. But I just want to mention that uh, he's talking about the work of the Spirit. Right? Isaiah is actually prophesying about a future work of the Spirit. Uh, uh, and he's and Paul refers to that in 1 Corinthians 14. He's talking about, you know, the gift of tongues and so on. Okay, so uh, okay, we'll we'll stop here. So there are other references also, and I just want to encourage you to, you know, just go through, read it, and we'll just get an understanding of what uh, the Holy Spirit does in the life of lives of people and what He did in the Old Testament times, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll take a break and then we'll come back.